video shows the installation of an Exidy ceramic clutch on a 2008 Toyota FJ Cruiser with a 4.0 liter V6 engine. This vehicle was loaned to us by Forest Motors of Orem, Utah. The video is 25 minutes long. You're welcome to view it in its entirety, fast forward through it, or choose the section you are most interested in. Regardless of the option you choose, we are confident it will make your clutch installation go smoother. Let's begin today's project by placing the transmission and transfer case shifters in the neutral position. Disconnect the negative battery cable to prevent accidental shorting. Place the vehicle securely on a twin post lift using the frame as your lift points. If rust is a concern, spray all the fasteners with a good quality penetrating oil, especially the exhaust nuts and bolts. Now let's move to the belly pan. The belly pan is removed by removing the four bolts. To gain better access to the front drive line, remove the exhaust heat shield. It is secured by two bolts. Remove the four nuts and washers securing the rear universal joint flange. Remove the four nuts and bolts securing the front universal joint flange. Then jar the flanges loose with a brass or a dead blow hammer. Once loose, set the drive line aside. Now let's move to the rear drive line. Remove the nuts and washers securing the front universal joint flange. Remove the bolts and nuts securing the rear universal joint flange. Jar both flanges loose using a brass or dead blow hammer as you did before. Once loose, set the drive line aside. Begin the process of removing the transmission support by slightly raising the transmission by using an under hoist support stand. Disconnect the two transmission support braces. Each brace is secured by four bolts. Disconnect one side only of the exhaust pipe shield. Remove the four bolts securing the transmission support to the transmission mount. Disconnect the passenger side transmission support from the frame by removing two bolts. Disconnect the driver side transmission support the same way. Be careful the support could drop out and cause damage or injury. Now to the exhaust system. Unplug the passenger side O2 sensor connector. Do the same to the driver side connector. Remove the driver side exhaust hanger. Disconnect the passenger side donut connector. There are two spring type bolts. Disconnect the passenger side exhaust pipe between the catalytic converters. Now disconnect the driver side exhaust between the two catalytic converters. Remove the exhaust heat shield. It is held by three nuts. Bend the exhaust pipe shield upward just a little. This will give you a little greater clearance when removing the exhaust components. Once the fasteners are removed, remove the exhaust assembly. It may require a little maneuvering, but it will come out. Disconnect each of the wiring connectors and brackets that are attached to the transmission or transfer case. We will not be showing each individual connector and bracket in this video, so it will be up to you to remember where each component is to be reconnected. Lower the transmission and transfer case a little. Remove the four bolts holding the transfer case shifter tower. Disconnect both vent tubes, one for the transfer case and one for the transmission. 
Remove the four bolts holding the transmission shifter tower. Lift out the transfer case shifter tower. Notice that it is sealed by a gasket, so it should break loose fairly easily. Lift out the transmission shifter tower. Note that it is sealed by an anaerobic sealer, so it may be a little more difficult to break loose. Remove the passenger side exhaust manifold brace. It's held by three bolts, two in the bell housing and one in the exhaust manifold. Repeat this same step on the driver's side exhaust manifold brace. The next step is to disconnect the hydraulic clutch supply line. Begin by clamping the flex hose to reduce fluid loss. Disconnect the hard line using a tubing wrench. Remove the retainer clip using a pair of pliers and remove the flex hose from the bracket. Position a second hoist stand under the transfer case and lift slightly. Remove the first hoist stand from under the transmission. Position the transmission jack under the transmission and transfer case unit. Be sure it is centered on these components so it is perfectly balanced when this unit is removed from the vehicle. Secure the transmission transfer case unit to the transmission jack using chains or ratchet straps. We're now ready to separate the transmission transfer case unit from the engine. Remove the 11 bell housing bolts. Two of these bolts not only secure the bell housing, but also hold the starter. Be sure to note where each bolt came from so they can be reinstalled in the correct location. These two top bolts as well as some of the other bolts are difficult to reach. We strongly recommend using a long extension and universal socket like this one to access these bolts. An impact wrench and universal socket is also helpful on the other bolts. Once all the bell housing bolts are removed, wiggle the transmission transfer case unit side to side and pull rearward, while at the same time having an assistant pry the unit away from the engine. Do not use excessive force as damage could result and do not pry against the engine oil pan. Once the engine and transmission is separated, move the transmission rearward about five inches to clear the input shaft from the clutch and pressure plate. Once clear, lower the transmission transfer case unit. Make sure all wires, hoses, and brackets are clear while lowering the unit. Remove the six pressure plate bolts. If you have any interest in reusing the pressure plate, it's important to remove these bolts evenly, each bolt a little at a time, so as not to warp the pressure plate. Once all the bolts are removed, pry the pressure plate off of the guide pins. This releases not only the pressure plate, but also the clutch disc. Both can be removed at the same time. A lot can be learned by inspecting the pressure plate and clutch disc. This pressure plate has been hot as evidenced by the discoloration noted here. The diaphragm fingers are also showing some wear where the release bearing rides against the fingers. The clutch disc was nearly worn out. 
The frictional material is nearly flush with the rivet. Now remove the flywheel. Remove the eight bolts and remove the flywheel from the crankshaft. Inspect the crankshaft rear main seal. If any leakage is observed, it is recommended that it be replaced. Inspect the starter teeth on the flywheel and repair or replace as needed. We recommend machining the flywheel regardless of how good the wear surface looks. It's important to clean the bell housing with brake clean to reduce the risk of contaminating the new clutch parts. Remove the release bearing fork. Remove the release bearing from the fork. Install the new release bearing. Wipe off the input shaft and the input shaft housing. Using the supplied grease, wipe a thin film on the input shaft and the input shaft housing. Wipe off the release fork pivot. Apply a liberal amount of wheel bearing grease to the pivot ball. Reinstall the release fork on the pivot ball and check the release fork for smooth operation. Clean the back of the engine with brake clean so as not to contaminate the new clutch parts. Clean the machine surface of the pressure plate with brake cleaner and a cloth. Clean the flywheel and both sides of the clutch disc in the same way. Put red thread locker on one of the flywheel bolts. Position the flywheel on the crankshaft and install the bolt. Install the rest of the bolts in the same way. Using a progressively tighter crisscross pattern, torque the bolts to 62 foot-pounds. Clean the wear surface of the flywheel once more in preparation for the disc and pressure plate installation. The TM side marked here indicates that this side of the clutch disc faces the transmission. Proper clutch disc orientation is critical. Insert the alignment tool in the clutch disc and place the disc against the flywheel with the TM side mark facing outward. Install the pressure plate using the guide pins to ensure proper fit and location. Apply blue thread locker to the pressure plate bolts and install them finger tight. Tighten the bolts by hand in a progressively tighter crisscross pattern. Tightening one or two pressure plate bolts without tightening the rest of them at the same rate can warp and ruin the pressure plate. Finish tightening these bolts with a torque wrench until 14 foot-pounds is reached. Once the pressure plate bolts are torqued to spec, remove the alignment tool. Remove any residual anaerobic sealer from around the transmission shifter area and wipe off the transfer case shifter tower gasket. Check the transmission shifter bushing for excessive wear and replace if necessary. Remove the sealer from the transmission shifter tower. Clean both shifter towers with brake cleaner. Apply bearing grease to the transmission shifter socket. Raise the transmission into position. Position the wiring harness on top of the transmission transfer case unit so they won't be damaged and can be correctly routed. Continue raising the transmission transfer case unit carefully watching to ensure nothing gets damaged. That's why I had to lift down lower. Once the transmission is at the correct height with the transmission input shaft properly aligned with the clutch, 
work the transmission closer toward the engine. Make sure the engine and transmission is coming together evenly. Ensure that the gap between the engine and the bell housing of the transmission is equal distance all the way around. Do not install the bolts until the transmission and engine come completely together by hand. Forcing these components together with bolts can damage expensive clutch, transmission, and engine components. Install the bell housing bolts in the exact same location they came from originally. Ensure that the two starter bolts have the flat washers on them. Snug the bolts in an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern by hand. Power tools could be used here, but use caution. Do not over tighten them. After all the bolts are snug, torque the larger bolts to 53 foot pounds and the smaller bolts to 28 foot pounds. Position the wiring harness. Make all the connections and attach all the brackets. Be sure all the wiring is secure and will not be damaged by any other parts. Lower the transmission and transfer case a little. Apply a thin coat of anaerobic seal to the transmission shifter tower. Install the shifter tower ensuring that the shifter bushing is inserted properly in the shifter socket. Install the bolts and torque them to 25 foot-pounds. Install the transfer case shifter tower. Make sure the shifter fits properly in the shifter forks. Install the bolts and torque them to 13 foot-pounds. Then install both vent tubes. Install the passenger side exhaust manifold brace. Install the driver side exhaust manifold brace in the same way. Raise the rear of the transmission transfer case unit using a hoist stand and remove the transmission jack. Remove the old exhaust donut as well as the exhaust gaskets. Clean all the mating surfaces with either a wire brush or a power wheel. Work the exhaust system back in its original location. Install the two exhaust pipe to manifold gaskets. Connect the exhaust pipes to the exhaust manifolds. Install and tighten the nuts. Install the exhaust donut. Install and tighten the spring bolts. Position the exhaust shield. And then install and tighten the nuts. Reconnect both O2 sensors. Be sure they snap into place. Position the front drive line and install the washers and nuts on the rear flange at the transfer case. Position the front of the drive line on the front differential. Install the bolts, washers, and nuts and tighten them to 65 foot-pounds. Then tighten the rear flange bolts to 65 foot-pounds. Install the exhaust hangers that support the exhaust system if they were removed earlier. Position the hydraulic clutch flex hose in the bracket and install the retainer clip.
Reconnect and tighten the hydraulic clutch hard line and tighten the fitting. Once the fitting is tight, remove the hose clamp. Position the front of the rear drive line on the transfer case flange. Install the washers and nuts. Position the rear of the rear drive line on the rear differential and install the bolts, washers, and nuts. Tighten all the nuts to 65 foot-pounds. Install the driver's side exhaust hanger and tighten the bolts. Position the transmission support and install the four bolts and flange nuts. Tighten the flange nuts. Install the four transmission mount bolts, just barely snug is enough for now. Then lower the hoist stand so the full weight of the transmission and transfer case is supported by the transmission support. Then tighten the four transmission mount bolts. Reattach the exhaust pipe shield and tighten the bolt. Install the driver side transmission support brace and tighten the bolts. Install the passenger side transmission support brace in the same way. Remove the hoist stand and set it aside. Install the exhaust heat shield and tighten the bolts. Reposition the belly pan, install the four bolts, and tighten them. The last procedure is to bleed the hydraulic clutch system. Begin this procedure by adding DOT3 brake fluid to the hydraulic clutch master cylinder. Have an assistant pump the clutch pedal several times. While holding the pedal to the floor, open the bleeder valve. When most of the fluid has stopped coming out, close the bleeder valve. Continue this bleeding procedure until no air is observed coming out of the bleeder valve. Be sure to check and fill the master cylinder periodically throughout the bleeding procedure and again as a final step. Reconnect the negative battery cable and secure it by tightening the nut. Before test driving the vehicle, do a final inspection. Check all hydraulics for leaks, electrical wires for proper routing and connections, and see that all fasteners are in place and tight. Now test drive the vehicle to see that everything is working properly. Join us now as we go on the initial test drive with Chris Conk of Low Range Off-Road. So this is the initial reaction of a FJ Cruiser clutch. Wow, that was a nice takeoff. Not a harsh engagement. Pedal feel is actually quite nice. It's not too harsh. It's not too, so much to wear your foot out or anything like that. It's. I don't think you'd really even notice it. Too much between the stock clutch. Downshifting's great. This is a start off in second. We're going to stop right now and we're going to go off first again. Okay, ready? It actually feels really nice. I was expecting a lot worse with the full ceramic facing. This to me is uh, very streetable.